رمضانيا خير الشهور يا فضل رحمن غفور فيك البشائر غيثها يهدي السعادة والسرور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear viewers, welcome to our program, Ramadan series. This is the fourth program of this, fourth episode of this series. And with me here in the studio, I have a gentleman and then elders of the Jamaat. Uh, to my immediate right, we have uh, Ustaz Muhammad Sinayako, who is a, fam a missionary in Guinea-Bissau, and of course, a family affairs now in MTA. Ustaz Sahib, you are welcome to the program. Okay. Next to him, we have uh, uh, our brother, Musa, Mr. Musa Kinte, who is also an elder member of the Jamaat. He is also holding different positions, and then he is also familiar in MTA, the Gambia. The face is familiar in our programs. Mr. Musa Kinte, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Ustaz. Uh, viewers, we will be discussing about Itikaf. Uh, this is the last 10 days, observing the last 10 days, staying in the mosque, that's itikaf. But before we go through that, I, I still remain your host as Ustad Dembaba. Then we will go through, find out the meaning of itikaf. Ustaz Muhammad Sinayoko, if you can tell us what is the meaning of itikaf. Jazakumullah, uh, brother Demba. Uh, itikaf really means seclusion, to uh, separate yourself for a religious purpose to stay at a place. Uh, generally, and in Islam, is in the mosque. Though uh, we can say that there are different forms of itikafs that has been mentioned. For example, we know that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take uh, some food before the call and uh, go to a mountain, one, one cave where he will go for seclusion for a number of days to remember and medicate, uh, meditate about uh, God, to find out about God until the revelation came to him. In a way, we can call it a sort of a itikaf, but itikaf in Islam really means to stay in the mosque in the last 10 days uh, to uh, intens intensify your worship and also to look for more blessings of Allah, especially for the uh, Laylatul Qadr, which is in the last 10 days of uh, Ramadan. Because that is what uh, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that uh, if someone intends to sit for itikaf, let him do it in the last 10 days of Ramadan because Laylatul Qadr is in that last 10 days. So this shows that uh, itikaf is a sort of seclusion that you separate yourself and disengage yourself with all your daily activities, your worldly activities and engage solely uh, to the worship of God and to meditate on God and his creations so that you will get the maximum benefit. Zakumla Ustasa for making that one very clear as uh, it is the worship of God Almighty during the last 10 days of uh, the holy month of Ramadan. So we move on. Mr. Kindersab, if we can get to you, oh, when and where can we observe the itikaf? Um, like Ustaz Sahib has said, it is not confined strictly to Ramadan only. Uh, we know that um, all spiritually highly placed men have observed this seclusion um, to gain, uh, like I said, to win the pleasures of their creator, to worship him with full concentration. Uh, but Ramadan offers that in a special way. And therefore, when itikaf is mentioned among Muslims, uh, generally our minds go on to the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, which, is, which was the sunnah observed by the Holy Prophet uh, and we were told that in his last year uh, before he passed away, he did 20 days. But uh, for previous years, he used to do 10. And uh, uh, the environment. Yes, the, the environment that is created 
is, is, is special for this. Um, even after his demise, the wives, the consorts, the, the, they continued the Sunnah. Uh, first of all, it is said that it is observed by men in the main mosque where places are reserved for this purpose. Um, if you, in our, in our, in our Baitul Salam here, I know what we used to do is we have these marquees, this tent that we create at the corner of the mosque. And that's normally, as in keeping with the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet there is this uh, pillar that's called the pillar of uh, repentance that was in his mosque. And they will put, you know, an area, they will demarcate an area where they will prepare some bedding for him. And he within will, the within the mosque. And he will stay there for the last 10 days, uh, worshiping God in uh, uh, Almighty, day and night. Uh, and and in, it is done in such a manner that there is no time uh, during that period that is wasted on doing things that are idle. You know, he will be engaged in the remembrance of Allah if he has nothing to do. Uh, and we'll be praying at night. And uh, sometimes he'll be sobbing, um, I, mean, I mean, weeping quietly uh, in, in his supplications to pray that uh, uh, um, Allah's mercy and grace descends upon not just himself, but uh, the Ummah that he is also the spiritual father of. So itikaf is such an important thing. It is uh, the opportunity, the um, real uh, um, a, a subjugation of the soul, the body, the mind, you know, to worship and concentrating on uh, the commands of God and uh, reciting different forms of prayer during that period. Indeed, it is, it is a very important component uh, of Islam as well. Uh, observing itikaf is so much important because as human beings, we are only created to worship God Almighty as he mentioned in the Holy Quran. He have, does, he have not created human beings, but only that we should worship him. So, and you have touched on uh, the importance of observing the nights and there is no time which is wasted during this uh, ten, last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. It also reminded me at the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have it in our society, we call it kalwa or something like that when somebody leave uh, from his comfort zone, we go to worship God Almighty in an isolated area. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do that and many Muslims used to do that. Then the promised Messiah alayhi salatu salam also, he did that. When he left his comfort zone, he went to Husaypur to supplicate for 40 good days. And then in that, he was very strict. He see that there is no need to waste time because he wanted to make sure that Islam is a living religion. And there, from there, God Almighty gave him some glad tidings. That is also very important to mention. But especially itikaf is meant for Ramadan. Thank you very much for making us understand that. So, Ustaz, what are some of the importance of itikaf? Yes, uh, before I go into that, uh, the place of itikaf, in fact, there is a hadith from Sunan Abu Dawud which says, Wala itikaf illa fi masjidil jami. jami. That means the mosque, which is the jami mosque, that is where one can have your itikaf. So, for that matter, it is very good that it will not be any type of mosque. Though women are allowed to have itikaf in a mosque that may be in their, yeah. close to their house. But for men, you have to go to the Jami, Jami mosque to have your itikaf. And uh, as you ask also, what are some of the blessings that we can gain out of itikaf? Uh, this has been the practice of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that uh, during the itikaf, when he is sitting with people, every morning he will ask them if anybody has seen any dream, they should relate, relate it to him so that he will give them interpretation. Which means that you come closer to God and God can inspire you through your dreams or visions, uh, things that are only given to a person who sits for uh, itikaf. This is why Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take keen interest in asking his sahabas, those who sat with him in etikaf, 
to find out if they have seen any dream to explain to him so that he will give them the interpretation and encourage them. So these are some of the blessings that one gains out of it. And as uh, we have mentioned before, it is a time that is solely devoted to the worship of Allah. Whereas you are not to engage in anything else, and then you will certainly gain the maximum benefit out of it because of that. And the recitation of the Holy Quran has to be multiplied at that time. If you can read the whole Holy Quran in those 10 days also, it's fine. Of course, in our society, you see people who do have what they call qiyam or layli in these days. These are not, this is not etikaf. Etikaf means to separate yourself from the worldly activities and to concentrate on worship of Allah in these 10 days so that you can get the maximum blessing. And it has to go with the, the fasting also. Thank you so much. You have made that one very clear. And you have also indicated some important points, which are, I have just got some points. That is the, the blessings or some of the activities which we are expected to do during this uh, time, during the last 10 days of Ramadan, when somebody, whoever want to observe the itikaf, that is the recitation of the Holy Quran, the zikr, remembrance of Allah the Almighty, prayers, and then devotion to Allah the Almighty, which are very important. As God Almighty have also mentioned, you uh, stated earlier on that God Almighty, it is the time that we address God Almighty and He answered to us. And Holy Prophet وسلم, used to uh, interpret the dreams of the companions. He will ask them about their dreams. And this is very important to understand. God Almighty have said, Udu uni astajib lakum. You call unto me, I will answer your, your call. So that is very important, Ustaz Saab. So Mr. Kinde, let's get uh, here. An old man who is having it, it is very difficult on him to even keep fast. Can he sit for itikaf? Well, uh, the sunnah of the Holy Prophet was that itikaf goes with fasting. So, it will uh, deduct from an itikaf if somebody wants to observe it without observing fast at the same time. But as it is uh, amply stated in Islamic teachings and in the teachings of almost all the religions, that there are, even for the fast of Ramadan, which is a pillar, there is an obviation, there is a permission given to those who can do so but with a lot of difficulties. What they can do is offer sacrifice. I mean, um, they can uh, pay fidya, you know, to compensate for the fasting that they could not do. Uh, this can be because of health reasons. And very old men are those ones who are very weak. We don't want to lose them now. Uh, we pray for them and, 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 you know, wish that they stay longer and, and offer more service and give uh, us ad advice and guidance. So it, it, they should not uh, subject themselves to rigors that will, that will be at the risk of their lives for, for no reason. You know, no, no reason should warrant that. Um, so it is, this, is, this is the case. Not, it is not in every condition that itikaf uh, can be observed. For instance, women go through menstrual cycles and uh, during that menstruation, they cannot, they cannot uh, observe itikaf. Even if they are in the process of observing itikaf, once that starts, it is advised that they should stop. So um, that, that despite, you see, the desire to please God and the inability to be able to fulfill that desire it's all very well known to God Almighty. And he's the one who is to reward. And he's the one who is most forgiving and most merciful. So that intention that you have, but you cannot carry out because of certain maladies, you know, incapabilities. Allah has the potential, and that's his mercy, to reward you full, you know? So you'll be surprised, you'll be amazed at, uh, what the kind of reward that some people will get because they have intended to do something good, but as a result of some obstacles, they could not fulfill their desire. Allah will, uh, out of his mercy, 
you know, give them recompense that equals those who have been able to do it because he knows their condition better than everyone else. Sakumla, Mr. Kinte, for uh, that, and it is indeed important that you have mentioned deeds are judged according to the intention of a person. This reminded me with the hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna mal a'mal bin niya, deeds are judged with the intention of the person or the individual. But then we have to understand that there is a story or narration where somebody was planning to go for Hajj. And that person, as he was planning to go for Hajj, he was keeping some amount of money, saving some money. He repair shoes and then save money. To an extent, it was time for him to go to Hajj. He stepped out, he saw some people who were needy. And then he gave out that money. He didn't go for that Hajj during that year. Then it was said that this man, all the, those people who performed the Hajj during that year, their Hajj is not accepted. But this man Hajj is accepted. So basically the intention matters a lot in Islam. The intention uh, contributes a lot in Islam. So Ustaz said, can somebody in the mosque sleep on a bed or in a bed in a mosque while observing this itikaf? Jazakumullah for the question, brother. Uh, first of all, before going to that, uh, there is an opinion because Musa, brother Musa was answering about uh, uh, itikaf and fasting. There is a hadith which came in or in Sunan by Haki, where he says, La itikaf illa bisaum. Yeah. And this is the opinion, general opinions of all the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you, uh, itikaf have to be, go with uh, fasting. It's, it cannot be without fasting. So if you are not unable to fast, then you are also excused of uh, the, holy uh, the, uh, the holy month of Ramadan. So uh, you are also excused from the itikaf. Okay, so when we come to this, yes, you can make your own bedding because the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making his bedding in the mosque. And uh, of course, you are not there to spend the whole night on the bed uh, or without worshiping Allah. But where you take your rest, you can make your bedding there, but it should not be an obstacle for the worshippers. This is why uh, Brother Musa was explaining that uh, a part of the mosque, whereas people may not necessarily need it, could be uh, covered in such a way that you could use it as your bedding when you want to take rest. Because uh, it's not haram that you have your bedding in the mosque in those days. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ustaz Sahib. This shows that you should not be lazy in any case. Mm. And I've seen the Muslims in general, Muslims, when they are entering or sitting for itikaf, they will do away with these worldly materials. They will do away with this wall. For example, somebody who is having his mobile phones, he will keep them somewhere. He will leave them in his house yeah. or leave it with somebody. Go enter in itikaf for completely 10 days. If you call them, you are not going to get them. This shows that they only for the sake of God Almighty, purely for the sake of God Almighty. And it is only dedicated for the worship, for the remembrance of Allah the Almighty. That is also very important. Uh, Mr. Kinte, what are the needs which are mentioned in hadith that somebody who a mutaki can leave his uh, the mosque or some needs may arise where you have to leave the mosque. What are some of those needs? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, you know, you're still human. And therefore, for the human being, there are needs. Uh, the call of nature is one that will come to mind immediately. Uh, we don't have toilets in the mosque. So obviously, if you want to relieve yourself of certain prayers of nature, you need to, you know, move to a toilet to do so. But in general, what it is telling you is that you, you, you have decided to seclude, to cut yourself from the world at least for a period, so that your, your focus is God and Allah alone and his worship. So like you have said, yeah, if you were keeping your mobile, there will be calls, and maybe somebody has fallen sick, very badly sick, and you know they, they need your, your, your attendance or something immediately, you know, otherwise harm will be done. But you're not supposed to open doors for all those um, worrying issues to come and assail you and d distract you from your focus. 
But uh, of course, uh, there, there's been occasions where the Holy Prophet Sassam, who is our, um, you know, exemplar of all times, he uh, had need to discuss issue and issue with the wife. And on that occasion, when the wife came to the mosque, they went out, and as they were walking, he was explaining this important and urgent issue to the wife. And while doing so, uh, a group of companions were gathered. They were also discussing their issue. And uh, when he reached them, what he did was he, has, he removed the, the covering from the face of the wife. That's the veil. The veil. And told the companions, you see, that's my wife. And some of them, you know, exclaimed, Allah, to say the Holy Prophet, we cannot entertain doubts about your, your integrity and your piety. But I told them that, you see, let's not leave room for it. That's the safest. Do not leave room for doubt. Otherwise, Shaitan will has the capacity to exploit it. So transparency was, was, was something that he had admonished that that way you will be able to keep uh, others' hearts purified about your conduct. So it is not like uh, you must not, for any reason, leave the mosque. But it must be that urgent reason that cannot wait and uh, failing to attend to that immediately will cause some harm. You know, in that case, of course, Islam is a religion of reason. Uh, it is not designed to bring on, you know, unnecessary hardship and suffering on the worshiper uh, or people related to him. So as a result, you know, a, a small way is open. But of course, you have to, you, you, the, all the mosques today, we all know, are in some location where you have an area and you can step out of the mosque and discuss an urgent matter and go back to attend to your religious duties. Thank you very much for making that very clear. Ustaz Sinako Saab, can somebody who is attending classes sit for itikaf? Yeah, it's not recommended that uh, when you are in school, uh, you do not have time, then you sit for itikaf. Because itikaf will not permit you to go out for those classes uh, in any way. So for that matter, if you are in school or there are some people whose work will not permit them to sit for say type of itikaf, so then they should excuse themselves. Though there are uh, uh, some uh, landed people who say that they are forced type of category of uh, itikaf, which is uh, pure seclusion, and there are the secondary type, whereas you can attend to some other needs. But in, in general times, it's better to uh, have your time for worship of Allah in these days, but not to uh, engage in anything else. Because you are looking for Allah, you are, you are doing it for the sake of Allah. That's right. so, so, Mr. Uh, Ustasa, we just still want to ask a follow-up question. That is about the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How did he normally practice this itikaf? How did he sit for itikaf? Meaning his worship, how did he normally to do that? The normally Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to uh, intensify his worship in this month, as we've mentioned before, his zikr, uh, his recitation of the Holy Quran, his nawafils and sunnas, uh, nawafils, uh, multiplied several times and uh, even the remembrance, just sitting to remember Allah also is multiplied in many ways. These are the purpose of one sitting in the mosque. It is not to engage in any idle talk also because for example if we have two, three, four people sitting in the mosque and instead of remembering Allah, you start entering into political discourse and other things which is so common in our society nowadays. It's not that. It should be purely for the sake of Allah, as Holy Prophet Wasallam has done with his sahabas. Of course, in those days you can learn from each other if you are in the mosque there. If somebody wants to learn something new from somebody, you can learn from him because uh, concerning Islam also, because that is part of worship and it is part of uh, your remembrance of Allah. So that is not bad, but going out for it, 
uh, to outside, then it means you are not in a state to be able to do your itikaf. That's what I mean. But inside the mosque, you can learn there uh, within yourself if you have the, uh, somebody who can teach you better. Uh, Islam, particularly, not your worldly uh, subjects or these things. Jazakumullah, thank you so much. Mr. Kinte, as we, we are getting closer to the time, and uh, Mr. Kinte, just quickly, maybe one minute, within one minute, can you just summarize or can you just finalize what you are expected to do as you have done already, but the viewers want to hear more about this itikaf? Itikaf um, is worship. Like I said, uh, there is a, a speciality about it. The last 10 days of Ramadan are the days when, the, like we said, we have uh, Laylatul Qadri in those days. And we said it is the night of decree, uh, which is equivalent to 1,000 months, which is about 83 years or so, the lifetime of uh, a fully grown person. So if, if you have that opportunity in a single night, you do not want to miss it. And uh, it, was, it was put vaguely uh, as one of the days of the odd, 10 odd nights of the last days of Ramadan. It could be any of them. So uh, to- Maybe the three, three odd nights during the last 10 days. Yes, exactly what I mean. Yeah. The odd nights in the last 10 days of Ramadan, which are three in, in, in fact. Uh, so since you, you are not very sure, sometimes we start Ramadan, it's arguable. Uh, some say it's today, others say it's tomorrow. So it may be even what you think is even, it, an even day is the odd day. So your safest thing is to do the 10 nights. So since that is the case, um, so as not to miss this opportunity, we do it in the last 10 days, uh, so that at least one of the nights So, so let's, let's just us. make this thing clear. Uh, I think it should be five uh, odd uh, nights during uh, the last 10 days, because from 21st to 29th. Night. So this would be the last uh, five nights, uh, the odd nights. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, can, it can only be five. But what I'm saying is, uh, w do we know whether the first day that we have observed Ramadan was actually the first day? Sometimes this is an argument that we always keep doing. They'll say, no, we saw the, the, the moon yesterday. And some people will say, no, no, it was not yesterday, it was today. When a woman says he has seen a mo the moon, a Muslim, anywhere, it's announced, we follow. So we, we may start today when actually maybe the one who saw the moon was not a mature person, was a minor. He may have seen something that appears like the moon, but it was not the moon. So if that kind of thing happens, it is the next day that, that is the first in sort of the day we have started. But in that case, if we have done the last 10, we are likely not to have missed the that Layla to the Khadr. And that's important. And it is during that period also, the last 10 days, that Hazrat Jibril will come and do a revision of the Holy Quran, like Usas has said, with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu It is wonderful if that finds you deeply engrossed in the worship of Allah in the mosque. You know, having nothing to do with the rest of the world and focus on your relationship with your Creator in order to maximize the benefits of that night. So it's, it's interesting that, uh, and it's, it's out of sheer wisdom, that, uh, that, that the night you know, of Laylatul Qadr has fall in, fallen in the last 10 days, and those are the days that have been selected for itikaf at the same time. Uh, this is very interesting. And I want to just correct something that I made, just to be precise, about, um, the Holy Prophet and Hazrat Safiya, uh, radiallahu anha, the Holy Consort of the Holy Prophet who came to see him in the mosque for an important issue that they discussed, and was seeing her off. She saw her off, he saw her off, up to the house, which was a bit far from the mosque. So it was, it had to cause them to travel out of the house. So that is, that is acceptable. And uh, like I've said, it has to be urgent situation that calls for immediate attention. And obviously, it is also not wise to leave a woman in the dark of night to walk back to her, to her house all by herself. Exactly. So, Thank you so much that you have made that very clear. Ustaz, have any comment or final comment? Yeah, I would say that uh, 
it was part of the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet that he sits in the mosque. And the last year that he passed away, instead of 10 days, he sat for 20 days. He make it car for 20 days. And after he demise, the wives took over to make sure that every year they have to observe it calf. And also the Sahabas of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also used to sit for it calf. So for that matter, it is one of the greatest blessings that Allah has given us through our beloved Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all those who will be able to find time to do it should practice it as Holy Prophet and his Sahabas have been doing it. We should not just leave it because it is uh, only when I grew up that I came to know there is something itikaf because in my childhood we never knew anything about it. Meaning that people are a little bit negligent about it and that being the case we never know it from that time until we started studying Islam that we came to know that oh there is something called exactly. itikaf. Yes. You made that very clear. It is indeed important for us to uh, take this up or as the Holy Prophet وسلم, and his companions were doing it. Thank you very much for the information. I indeed learned a lot from your discussion and I hope also our viewers have learned a lot. Mr. Kinder, thank you so much and Ustaz uh, Muhammad Sinayako, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Viewers, this is all time allowed us for this program. I am your host, Ustaz Dembaba, from us here, MTAD Gambia, till we come your way again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan ya khair al-shuhur Ya fadl rahman ghafur Fik al-bashair ghaythuha Yuhdi al-sa'adat wa-surur Ramadan ya khair al-shuhur Ya fadl rahman ghafur Fik al-bashair ghaythuha Yuhdi al-sa'adat wa-surur